This is Horizon's FD75, and as ever with Horizon, this is all about volume. The space they got into this for a 75 footer is pretty impressive, and I'm going to take you on board and demonstrate exactly that. We're going to go to every area on this one. We're going to crew areas, engine areas, guest areas, deck areas, the lot. And we're starting here. We've got a high low platform so your tender can live on here. In fact, there are two tender places for this. That's down to the crew area and also the engine space. We are, of course, going to go and have a look at that, but not before going inside first of all because it's the inside of this I think is is rather special so cockpit is here we've got the big overhang a lot of shade the table is hard to adjust if you want to bring that down as more of a coffee table you can do or have it up as a dining table as it is at the minute steps up to the flybridge we're going to show you that of course and a route forward over here in fact these are asymmetric decks so there is a route right through to the bow here if we wander over to this side you'll notice that there is a route forward, but it's not a normal guest route. Um, and the reason for that is to bring the saloon right out to make that a really impressive space. And I'll show you exactly what I mean in about 15 seconds time after pointing out that this is access down to that crew area. You don't have to go down onto the bathing platform and in. Clearly, if you're out at sea, you wouldn't necessarily want to do that. So I'll show you the other side of that when we go into the crew area, but that is where that is. This will open. So this one opens and this one opens and they stack over there. So you can have a massive opening here if you want to. And this is what you get on the inside. And you can see just how much space taking this side of the boat out gives you, because that is huge. I'm not gonna keep saying it because <laughs> I tend to do this on these Horizon boats, but please remember 75 foot yacht this one, because it's easy to forget. Now, this boat is brand new. How brand new? It came off the ship that it was delivered on and <laughs> sailed straight here, which is why we don't yet have a dining table, but this is a dining table area just here. So that is going to go in very shortly. Didn't quite make it to the show. Love this area here with the open area for catering, obviously. And the thing with this size of boat is that an awful lot of these are in fact owner operated. They don't have crew at all. Clearly you can do, or you might just perhaps have a steward or a stewardess or maybe a captain, but um, in many cases, people don't even have that. They run the boat entirely themselves. So the idea of having this as one big open entertaining space where nobody feels like they're down in the galley making their sandwiches for everybody else who's up on deck having a good time, this works well. Okay, there's a couple of routes down to the lower deck. There's one here and there's one here. And the reason for that will become evident as we go forward. This television swivels turns all the way around and then it retracts down into that box there so you don't have to have that there but when it is in place it's a decent size and then we come up through here this is the um the lower helm in fact it's not really a lower helm because it's raised up it's sort of mid helm really in fact i'm just going to poke my nose up there and show you there are two helm stations on this boat both of them are optional you might want to have a pantry here instead or there's various things that you can use this space for and again, it depends whether you're running with the crew, whether you're an owner operator. So very much to personal spec, but this does give you a nice internal helm position and a great view out. But you'll see when we go up onto the flybridge how that may not necessarily be necessary depending on how you can pick up the boat. Wine cooler, door straight through to the outside. And then down here, we have this wonderful separate cabin in the bow, all of its own. So we don't have other cabins going off in different directions down here. This is just this, and it's lovely. These are wardrobes across here, and everybody complained, not everybody complained, some people complain, like, why do you keep opening the wardrobes? But I just think, it's nice to see, isn't it? There we go, drawers in there, shelves, that kind of stuff. Same deal over on that side. Dressing table over here as well, more storage over here. And if we swing around here, Well, then we've got the ensuite. So there's a pocket door that slides across to close that off. Twin basins, very nice shower over on this side. It's nicely finished, isn't it? So that is that cabin, as I say, all of its own. But there are more. Let's head back around here. Look at these massive hull windows. Brilliant. So back up and round and down and what's interesting is that this one kind of goes underneath that one let me explain here we've got one two three four steps we say one two three four onto this level here here we've got 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we're down. And so we're now under that cabin that we just saw. This is really clever. Well, not quite. We're back a bit from it, but that's the stairway down to it just there. So you can see how they've sort of split leveled it. And that gives you a couple of things. First of all, gives you a load of space in this yacht. So guest cabin here, wardrobe is in here, AV equipment, usual kind of stuff. Window is in behind there. And there's another one of these over here and now you can see how we're moving forward and under that cabin that's brilliant and there's one more brilliant thing in here so this has got two single beds in the other cabin we looked at they had tracks so you could bring the bed across I meant to point that out forgot <laughs> but you can convert the other cabin into a double this you can't and the reason you can't is because it has this <laughs> check this out ever worried it might run out of storage not really a problem is it sir or madam look at that that is vast, right up into the bow. So people come down with suitcases and other awkward things. They think, what on earth am I going to do with that? Well, no problem. That ladder is because there's access directly from the foredeck. So if you want to use that for deck gear or, I don't know, inflatable paddle boards, that kind of stuff, well, then you can. But that is a very, very impressive area. And that, again, we're back under. I think I'm right in saying. Um, that cabin we looked at in the bow. Shelving in here. There's wardrobes as well there in behind the door. Wardrobe, even. There we go. And both of these cabins share this day heads. So this isn't accessed from either cabin. It's just a door in the passageway here because the threshold for this cabin is here. Really nice size, really nice shower. Very nice indeed. And then we can go back so it's a four cabin layout in total. You've got this one here, which I didn't mention that that forward cabin was an owner's cabin because I'm not sure it was. I think this is probably bigger. So you can argue whether you want the separate access as being the owner's cabin or whether you want this as being possibly slightly larger as the owner's cabin. <laughs> it's almost as though it has two owner's cabins, isn't it? And in fact, for people who are, you know, sometimes people will buy a boat together. You'll have two couples that run a boat together because neither of you is using it all the time. This is fantastic, you can have a cabin each and neither of you feels remotely shortchanged. That's a big space. Um, again, wardrobes and places like this, storage about the place, like so. So yeah, plenty of places to tuck your clobber away and an ensuite on this one, of course. That's over here. Shower. Basin. Toilet. Mirror wave. Nice, huh? Lots more to see. Let's keep on going. Oh, I didn't show you laundry facilities. They're in here. Washer and dryer, or vice versa. In fact, in fact, I think they might be both. <laughs> I think they're both washer dryers. I'm not absolutely certain. I'm not an expert on laundry, but clearly you could put in there whatever you wanted anyway. Those are your laundry facilities. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, here we go. These are these tracks you can see in the floor. So basically that one, I think mm, that one moves across to there, I think. But either way, you can make that into a double. Okay, love these little lit alcoves like this. They've got a lot of space into this, haven't they? We're going to come around here and we are going to go this way. Because I want to take you up the side. Wine cooler is in there. There is access from this, um, from this internal helm. You can get actually up onto the fly visual. I'll take you around this way because I want to show you around the bow and that'll wind us that way anyway and then we can come back down the stairs that are at the back back to the cockpit and I'll show you the crew areas so this is your forward sloping windscreen from that helm and then this is another really great relaxing space up here on the bow these poles are because you can put a bimini across here goes into those hooks and obviously shades this area this backrest here looks like it's not a very comfortable backrest but this section here will tilt up 
to make seating or have it down for a big relaxing area with a load of cushions. Similar deal here. You can see there's that centre section that runs across there. That will hinge up that way. If you want that seating, then you can do. If you want to keep it a sun pads, well then of course, not a problem. We'll come right up to the bow. I think I'm right in saying that it's this one here is the access to that vast space that we saw up under the forward area there. Look at that. Now the flybridge is up this way. This is a semi-enclosed flybridge and you can see what I mean. And this is why for some people they might consider that this helm position is redundant because you have got a fairly but not completely internal helm position up here. We'll go up on round and I'll demonstrate exactly what I mean. So again with Horizon it's all about options. You can have this if you prefer as a completely open deck. You don't have to have any of this. You could just have the hardtop. I guess you could even do without the hardtop if you really wanted to. Or you can do what this has, which is a sort of semi-enclosed. So this is weather protected, but it's open-sided and open-backed. Or you can enclose the sides on both sides, put a bulkhead across the back and have this as a sky lounge area and have this as the helm. And in that case, if you had this as a helm and this all enclosed, of course, then the lower helm would become redundant. You've already got an internal helm. So that's why there are various options depending on where you're using the boat and what you want. This is the access that takes you back down to that lower helm station that we saw. We've got multifunction displays on here, of course, engine instrumentation, um, throttle controls, thruster controls, all the usual malarkey for handling the boat. Another door on that side as well, so you can go out and around that way if you want to. There's a big bar area up here. Another interesting thing is there is actually air conditioning. You can see the, um, the vents right there, which does absolutely nothing on a day like today with the sides open. But if you were to enclose this, of course, well, then you would have an air conditioned area. And if you wanted to, you could have those eyes and glass, I guess, going around here and enclose it with that in a way that you could then take it out if you preferred. These fold up. So if you want to make that smaller, you can do. But as it is, it's a really nice outside dining area. And look at this bar over here. Isn't that lovely? If we have a wander around, it's the usual bar stuff. It's your sink and it's your fridge and it's your ice maker and so forth. Curious as to what's in here though. Uh, okay, just big storage areas. That's quite handy actually for canopies. Um, people say, well, what happens? Well, the weather's not so good. And it, what happens is you put those canopies over some of the soft furnishings areas like this. Obviously, a lot of this is designed that it can get wet without any problems anyway. It's only really on the cushions that you need it. And then check this out. I mentioned there's another space for a tender. You can put one up here. This will handle the same weight. I think it's 1,500 pounds. I don't know what that converts to in metric. Um, but yeah, that crane there will lift a tender or a jet ski up onto here. And this is designed to take the same amount of weight as that bathing platform. So you've got two options there. You could use either or indeed you could use both. So when the tender is up, it looks a little bit like the boat next door. Perhaps a slightly smaller tender because that is a bigger boat. This is interesting. That's a freezer. So if you've been fishing on the back of the boat, you don't have to annoy the missus by dragging your dead fish inside. <laughs> you can put it up here if you want to. Again, owner spec, depends on what you want. And clearly, while you've got no dinghy on there, if you want to put some bathing out there, steamer chairs, that kind of thing, perfect place to do it. And in fact, they've even put a bimini on here as well, so you can shade that area. And then the barbecue is over here. It's a pretty decent size, isn't it? And I think sink underneath that one. No. Ah. I'll tell you what that is, that's for the propane for your barbecue. And again, something you almost never find on a 75 foot yacht is a day heads up here. I can't think of another sub 80 foot boat that's got a day heads on the flybridge. That's really nice. Brilliant. Okay, I think we've covered that fairly well. We need to go down now and look at those crew areas and look at the engine space. This closes off if you want it to. As mentioned, for a lot of owners, the crew areas really won't get used as, except perhaps as overflow sleeping because they simply won't have a crew. But if you want a crew, not a problem. That can be catered for. Or they can be catered for, I should say. That situation can be catered for. That's what I'm trying to spit out. All right, here we go. So you've got the door on the back here. You can see how that cantilever is open on these huge stainless steel hinges. And if we go down here, so that was the hatch that I mentioned that you can access. So you don't need to come to the bathing platform to get in here. Clearly, if you're out at sea and the weather's not quite so good, that would be a suboptimal route through. You would come this way instead. So that goes round and you can see, there we are. That's where we were a moment ago. 
Okay, so what we've actually got down here then is one crew cabin with two beds and one toilet. They've kept this separate, it's over here. And the nice idea about this is that this, again, remember this may not be a crew area at all, but it makes it a really nice area for if people are swimming and want to get changed or whatever, then you've got access straight from the bathing platform straight into here. You can use this as a day head at the back of the boat. Then over here, a two berth crew cabin. Which again, for a 75 er boat, that is a generous size. Normally you have bunk beds rather than separate beds like that. And then finally down here, engine access. So, <laughs> if we're turning the right one, the right way, hang on. What am I doing wrong? Ah, being weak, that's what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> here we go, this is the engine space. And again, really good size, really good headroom really well lit as well actually and what we have in here is a pair of caterpillar c18s they are 1136 horsepower each they're giving the boat just over 20 knots flat out you can cruise at 17 and a half if you want a fast cruise if you want range well then drop the speed back because at 10 knots you'll get over a thousand miles out of her about 1200 i think is the official numbers but yeah nice and clean and crisp and well lit and lovely generator down here as well of no doubt is that it over there yeah there we go tucked in behind there that is um water maker that sea exchange and in fact there's a second generator over on this side very nice very nice indeed lovely okay i think that's about it let's come back out of here shut that one behind me and we'll head right on out and finish back where we started on the aft deck so there we go that is the horizon fd 75 i think it's absolutely fascinating and as ever with horizon it is incredible just how much volume they've got into there Massive thanks to Horizon for organising that tour. They've got me in early. Well, we've got a nice empty boat, so I've had a clear run at that one, which has been brilliant. Let me know what you think of that. I think it's been absolutely fascinating, and we will look forward to catching you on one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.